Blaine explains that he could have sex with women if he wanted to, but he's saving himself for marriage. Yeah, he's out of nowhere. He's just like, you know, 80% of kids lose their virginity before graduating high school. That I read that, but that has to be high. That's, That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> who, who has sex before they're 38 and they're living in their mom's basement doing a comedy show? And it, what? Who's talking? Who wants to fuck an apple pie? Because an, <laughs> an apple pie counts. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because other jobs make us wear pants. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who fucks? Who fucks? Every mustache of the 1980s. <laughs> it was an amazing... It was November for a decade, and it was <laughs> glorious, and we get to see some of it. Ah. Uh. With this That's movie, nice nicest thing something. anyone but Andrew has ever said about my decade. Thank you, Heath. Thank you. <laughs> Some strong mullets too. Oh it's yeah, fun. no, we, we have yeah, fun time. yeah, it was a good time. And of course, sitting nine hundred miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Ready to dive headfirst into the premier Christian entertainment that they've offered in the last four decades. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm actually really looking David forward to David A.R. White one. is furious about that right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no shit. He just pulled his headphones out. He's storming to see his agent. <laughs> He's going to see us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched OK Boomer, the sketch comedy show. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's called Fire by Night. N-I-T-E, and we watched episode motherfucking one. We watched the 1986 pilot of this direct ripoff of Saturday Night Live, but for Christian people. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's a terrible monologue by a, a non-comedian, a bunch of uninspired sketch comedy, and a musical guest. And um, Christians took that model and made it so much worse with this one. They <laughs> added a, a sitcom in there. There's a sitcom in the sketch comedy show. Mm -hmm. There's a, I think, a podcast interview. Somebody's <laughs> yes. first podcast interview is in there mm -hmm. in the format. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you yeah. read? You read in the show? Yeah. <laughs> he tries to read in the show. He has he cue cards. He has trouble with oh, them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It does yeah. not go well. Okay, so Eli... How bad was this episode? Oh, well. <laughs> you were so sad. You couldn't even do a, an well. enthusiastic well. You're just like, well, yeah. Okay. Well, well. You know the first episode of SNL and you watch it now? <laughs> and you're like, no, George Carlin, too much cocaine. Oh, he you... does not do well in that monologue. He no. is a comedian. God, I no. one of the best. No, no, no. no. Sad. No, here, I yeah. can do this. I can do this. Here we go. Well. You, you, <laughs> if you love youth group, but your pastor actually had the courage to end it all and it was a real bummer for oh, God, everybody, on, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's a uh, Saturday Night Live in the Path of the Lord. <laughs> it's so bad. That's I enjoyed it though. It's fun to watch. I enjoyed watching. Yeah, this show. no, it was. <laughs> it was. It was fun to watch them fail so bad because they seemed cognizant of it, right? Absolutely. Like most of the time, they seemed like they knew they were failing. They Ooh. tried, but knew they failed. So it was both. Yeah, it was both of the great parts. You got to see them be like, "Oh, it's our new." No, no, it's going really badly. Oh, it's bad. It's right away. It's real bad. All right. <laughs> so Eli, please tell me that. All the other episodes of this were lost tragically in a fire and will they never. They were not. I own the box set. We have them all. <laughs> oh, no. And so does everyone else because they're on YouTube in order. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm not sure, but based on the future outlook that I've seen, the guy who uploaded these to YouTube did so with a heart full of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and is deeply deeply upset and offended that anybody doesn't like every single episode of the show <laughs> and chimes in on the comments. So 
Get ready Amazing. for some comments. They're pretty <laughs> amazing. Fantastic. The show lasted for like 10 years, didn't it? It mm-hmm. like went well into the 90s. Oh, wow. Started in 86. They just kept making them. Yeah, well, I oh, guess hell. if you don't have to make money at it, you can keep going. Yeah. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with best worst YouTube pity recommendations. <laughs> They're amazing. For me. So I'm watching it on YouTube, like everybody did, and all the suggestions for up next were Chris Farley stuff. They were like YouTube was certain I'd made a terrible mistake <laughs> and they really wanted to fix it. There's like error messages popping up on my screen. Oh no, no. If you want skit comedy, we have better than this. No, hold we on. We do. I promise. Are you sure you didn't mean Chris Farley? Are you positive? <laughs> Netflix pops up. Are you still watching? What? I'm not even, I'm not on your service. <laughs> yeah, but are you though? <laughs> All right. So I was going to go with best worst studio audience. Okay. Now look, I'm sure the people who made this would tell you there was no studio audience and they were just on a soundstage somewhere. <laughs> but my theory is that there was, right? <laughs> it makes it so much more fun to watch. If you just imagine that there was an audience sitting there in stony silence the entire time, <laughs> not outside the room of possibility. <laughs> All right. I was going to go with best worst. What's hot. Amazing. Uh, I'll admit, That's a segment that yep. they do. Not a lot of movies we've watched have tried to tell us what's hot, but I would venture all of them had done a better job than this movie. Did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, strong. Dis- you don't like DeGarmo and Key? They tell us about DeGarmo and Key. We Be reviewed 666. Six, six. For MTV. Yeah. We get a really, really <laughs> intense DeGarmo and Key analysis in this film. <laughs> do. I enjoyed that a lot. Also, a baby in a doctor's we'll bag. To this it was some pretty awesome stuff. that we actually had all of the uh, the backstory on it going in, too. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're about to enter a world where Heath can authoritatively criticize the accent work. So we're going to need a minute to prepare. But we'll be back on the other side of this break with the desperate impressions of comedy that are Fire by Night. Episode one. Peer pressure. I'm done with the title on that. We swear that's the end of the title this time. <laughs> full, full movie 2016 <laughs> slash 02 yes. slash 29. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to the very first writing session for Fire by Night. Woo! Uh, just, no, yeah. Just quick thing. You spelled night wrong. No, I didn't, You're Dave. Shut that? up. Shut up, Dave. Okay. All right. Okay. So no wrong answers. Let me hear them sketch ideas. Um. Okay. So. There's this guy and this girl, and they're on a date, right? Ooh, ooh, Whoa. ooh I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's for us. Yeah, a little bit risque, I date? would say. Are no? they even married? R- really? Yeah. Okay, I, I got one. I got one. So okay. what about a bunch of guys? They're all sitting around. They're playing poker. And gambling, then gambling. What happens in- yeah, no, can't do gambling. Right, no. right. right. sorry. Yeah, okay. All right, you know what? New plan. Let's tackle this from a different direction. Let's put up some ideas of the things that we can talk about. Right. Yeah, perfect. So. Uh, Bubble? No. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. The, great. Yes. Yes. We got one. Okay. The Bible. No, I'm putting good. it up. The, we, on the we got one. We got one. Um, school. Lunches, hey, school lunch is hilarious because yeah. because the food is not particularly good a lot no. of time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, no, yeah, it's not, that's gonna be good. fun. I, I'm getting well, not ideas, but I'm I I got a beer. Uh, we could talk about beer. Seriously, what? dude. When no, no, no. Hear me out. The fact that beer will kill you. Beer will kill you. Great. Oh. Now that's going on the board too. Okay. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. What about, um, uh, we can talk about, you know what? That's probably fine for 80 episodes, 80 episodes. Yeah. We yeah got that's 80 fine. That's enough. We got, right? we got yes. a decade of material. Sure. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. We're going to open up on Eli learning that a desperate effort by an out of touch Christian group to seem convincingly eighties hip is ultimately indistinguishable from actually 
being 80s hip. And that was depressing, actually. <laughs> this little opening montage, the ridiculous big hair and the synthesizer tunes and the ridiculously large opaque sunglasses in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> see, we can have pictures of New York in our credits, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're just like clearly stealing the New York City opening mm -hmm. from SNL here. But they have <laughs> they have no idea what a real city looks like. I don't know where they filmed this, but I don't think it's New York City. It's Muskogee. A, somebody's house. And they accidentally show us what I'm pretty sure was a drug deal between two gay men. <laughs> take me there. Like, Heath, take me there. It seemed to be two very, um, very flamboyantly leather, scantily clad men definitely doing a drug deal. Kind of like... Um, like a village people scenario. Like, oh. cra crazy dress. The uh, sixth village person was actually just a drug dealer, but the outfit never made any sense, so they caught him. It was a whole thing. Yeah, they were, they were always rotating those things. There was like the leather whatever. There was like leather guy. There was just leather guy yeah. at one point, wasn't there? Yeah. So <laughs> there's a couple of them doing that. I, I really hope the guys in this intro did that for spite. They were just like, yeah, this is New York City, guys. We're going to we'll do it up for you. <laughs> we'll New York it up. <laughs> So, yeah, so we get their cheap ass SNL ripoff intro and then we meet our host. This is uh, Blaine Bartle, Bartel, right? <laughs> yep. Illiterate Dana Carvey. Oh, yep. my God. Yeah. So this guy is going to do what he seems to think comedy is like, right? He's going to do an impression of comedy. Right. But like <laughs> an alien's impression of comedy, right? Yeah. Right. No, he doesn't oh. know about punchlines. No, he hasn't no, gotten no. to the end of the class yet. Not really premises either or subjects or <laughs> predicates. Yeah, just completely alien. He just shows he walks on stage and he's like, did my thing that says Blaine Bartle come up so everybody knows that I'm the Blaine Bartle? The little thing. Cool. All right. Speaking of premises, school. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. A thing I'm talking about now. <laughs> I feel like he went online and saw there was a class in like observational humor and he was like, well, that's all there is to it observations. Yeah, I got right. those already. <laughs> I know nouns and I will observe them. I will verb those nouns. What Save is myself. up with all of these derogative statements? Um, <laughs> so yeah, right. And honestly, like he is, I swear to God, he gets as far as, well, we're glad you're here for our inaugural buh before he flubs a line, right? Because yep. he goes, we're glad you're here for our inaugural <laughs> broadca broadcast. Like, okay, we're rolling with it. There's no audience, but it's still live, I guess. <laughs> he thought about his name. He was like, inaugural Blaine Blah. Man, <laughs> I thought it was me. I was thinking of me. I thought of me. It's like nice to know that Way of the Masturbator has less editing than our show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. So he's going to start off with his little monologue about how tough school is. He, he feels the need to tell us that he graduated from school. He's like 36 and he seems to think he, he keeps looking at the camera going like, I'm sure you guys thought I was 17. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm a high school graduate like from a while back. But I'll have you know, I, I play one later on. <laughs> wink. <laughs> Jesus. I don't believe he's been to a high school. <laughs> I don't believe he during this little bit. He's like, yeah, so you know in high school when you learn about how George Washington is yes! the first president of the United States? Mm. Yes, he's going like, you know what I loved about uh, school is when you had to raise your hand, they'd ask you like, who's the first president of the United States? And everybody raised their hand. And man, I hated that about high school. <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Blake, can and you name another thing that you learned in high school? Food hats. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Blaine Bartles is my name. <laughs> Shit, I did it again. <laughs> yeah. So he proceeds to do his like tight 30 seconds on the humor of hand raising. Yep. Which was we, like he, he he thought he had a character impression that he was working on that the teacher. Yeah, yes. Done. Mm -hmm. That's the character. Yep. And then with that hand raising bit out of the way, he's no longer off book. So he has to take out his cue cards. <laughs> <laughs> he made it 3 minutes. If, into the show if. before being like, sorry, all of this comedy gold is mostly written down for me. Let me flip over to the next cue card. Ah, I see. 
Let's Numbers point on at my this arm. food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And say it's not My cue card says, use the props on your weird <laughs> prop desk. Oh, yeah. Then he tries for goddamn prop comedy. He's like, hey, and I'll tell you what else could be a funny premise if somebody other than me was writing it. Uh, a freshman at high school survival kit. Get it? Huh? Check. I was just happy that they were going to use that weird pile of shit that was next <laughs> to him for the beginning of this. So I was like, what the fuck is he doing with that stuff? <laughs> It's like an empty chair POW display with like the fake <laughs> lemon and everything. At this point, I wrote in my notes, okay, new theory. This gentleman just wandered onto set and they just cut the end where he called his ex-wife a bitch and blew his brains out. <laughs> <laughs> also, at the end here, he has a moment where he's like, tired of swirlies? What about the seniors? And I wanted him so badly to pull out a gun. <laughs> he's like, this will stop him. It's the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the so the premise of this whole thing, he's like, he's like, you know, we, we'll give you the freshman survival kit if you call now. And just to give you an idea how bad it is, he's like, one of the worst things about being a freshman is you don't know your way around, so you could use this cane to pretend you're blind, and then people will ask you, it would be able to help you get around, get it, because if you were blind. See, look, I'll put it on. I'll put the cane and the glasses on, and I'll act like a blind person. So it's Christian, so he's only knowing the stool, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the bit that's it it's just right. yep i'm blind. like he's doing prop comedy he stole from soul man and that's it that's the blind whole bit. people be walking like yeah. this yeah seriously <laughs> if this ended in blackface i would have been zero percent surprised i've been like oh. okay, yep this this tracks this is what i expected you know the only kid they want to help out more than the blind kid that's right pulls out grease paint unscrews can <laughs> the black <laughs> blind kid <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, to help me with the rest of this sketch, Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> oh, God. Also, the uh, data point that he introduced here to get the blind bit going was crazy, right? He says 95% of Americans have compassion for blind people. <laughs> who are those people? I want to know who the 5% are, too. That was very important to me. Who? Who's like one in 20 people is like, no, fuck that. <laughs> Whatever. Faking it. You should have thought of that before you couldn't see. Yeah. Well, and also I love how effortlessly he shifts into he's like, yeah, so let's see. What do we know about uh, going to school? You got to find your way to the class. You got to remember your locker number. The food isn't good. Oh, also, you constantly get your head shoved into a toilet. Right. Is that everyone or just me? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and this is another time where he starts completely forgetting his bits and he has to go back to his cue cards but he's a very very slow reader <laughs> yeah. so he's like so we watch him sound out his next cue card before he delivers it <laughs> it's amazing he's just like another scenario that i have written down perhaps is <laughs> toilets are funny toilets it's so rough <laughs> He goes into slow motion, like reading his cue cards made him go into slow motion. It was so fun. Yeah. And by the way, his the part of the freshman survival kit that you get in case you're worried about having your head shoved into a toilet is beans. Because if you fart, people will not want to be around you. Uh, Ethan, much. I can verify that farting a bunch does not stop bullies from picking you up. <laughs> so throw that out there. I mean, we're from different ends of the spectrum about why we know that, but we can both tell you it doesn't stop the bullies from picking on you. Yeah, if your concern is that your head's going to get shoved into that toilet later, maybe a big diet of beans isn't a great way to go. But um, yeah. Not smelling good doesn't solve as many problems as you think. <laughs> Just a tip for everybody. All right, so that's the whole thing, by the way. That's the opening monologue. Boy, that high school food, that sure is crap, huh? Mm hmm And then we cut to their first skit. <laughs> this is the best thing. Which is titled Communist High. All right. Um, name a mass hysteria. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? If high school communist. communist. I heard communist. Nobody said that. I said communist. I would like it to be communist. And... Now name a prop comedy premise from my monologue moments ago. High school. <laughs> Got it. Got it. If high school tires you, what will Footman do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, and this is the first time we're introduced to these actors doing accents. All right. Now, I'm not going to sully the name of a communist accent by applying it to these guys because they just start doing accents and then give up and remember later. It's like me. 
<laughs> it's so rough. And as far as I can tell, the idea of this sketch is imagine if schools were publicly funded, right? How <laughs> well, yeah. The scary, terrible communist thing they open up with is the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, wait, but to the wrong flag. Eli, to the wrong flag. Also, I love that they, they, they had everybody had guns, and I'm just like, yeah, what American would want guns in the schools? Wouldn't want to have teachers armed with guns. This is like pledging allegiance and guns in schools, both much more of an American thing than a Russian thing. Sorry, guys. Yeah. They also manage pretty impressively to fuck up the repeat after me joke. <laughs> right? Look at that. Hey, everybody. They do. Repeat after me. No, after not me. That. After Sorry. him. And no, two. no, no, you're supposed to you're say, supposed to s- no, I'm standing, standing behind, behind you. you. Stop. We're restarting. We're the bit. starting the bit. Are we physically Stop. or just <laughs> verbally <laughs> Karen, copying after you? I'll shoot you with this fake. Follow gun, I you in God. line. <laughs> I shot you. <laughs> so they do that bit. But the whole the, the whole skit basically is that they're trying to get him to pledge allegiance to Vladimir Lenin. I almost said Putin. But this one thirty I Lenin. <laughs> yeah, that, that's <laughs> Vladimir Ilya Julianov. <laughs> but this 36 year old high school student that's balding with a mustache doesn't want to pledge allegiance to Vladimir Lenin. He wants to pledge allegiance to Jesus. Yep. And his argument is Jesus is alive and communism is dead. Yep. <laughs> Both demonstrably false. Yep. Yeah. So the kid points that out. He's like, yeah, Jesus is like alive. Come on, man. And the teacher says, oh, you only worship Jesus? Is that a new American standard? And the guy, the kid's like, no, it's actually King James. There was a pun about the title of Bible versions yep. that they threw in there. Yep. Yeah. Which means Heath has to live with the fact that 1980s him sat in the writer's room with his arms crossed until they kept that line in the show. <laughs> new American standard. They're going to fucking love it. They're right in the pilot. Become a podcaster. All right, so they take <laughs> Boris, the one who won't pledge allegiance to to Lenin, out back to shoot him. But I guess God stops the bullets or something. They miss, so they send him back to class. Send him back to class. And then they've got this hilarious bit where they're all going to read out loud from the Communist Manifesto, and it's stuff like "Run, Marxist, run!" In the can you can you imagine? Well, and little note here, they try to do a big thing where they're like, a communist manifesto, volume one, part one, episode C, appendix A, communist manifesto's 48 pages. Yeah, okay? no, it's a long pamphlet. Yep. <laughs> Christians, you get a lot of hypocrisy just based on being old, but you should definitely not accuse other people of having overly long, boring <laughs> books. <laughs> Stay in your zone. Yeah, and if everybody who ever read the Bible read Marx and Engels instead, the world would be a much better place. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. But then the same kid or was it a different kid? No, it was the same the kid. Yeah, he, he, they sent him back in after they failed to shoot him to death. And this time he reads the Bible instead of the Communist Manifesto. That'll show him. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he says, like, I'm the way, the truth and the life. And then they're like, we're going to kill you with bazookas this time. Bazookas. The didn't work. Yeah. Get it? They missed. They missed a great opportunity there, though. At the end, that could have been the end of this sketch, and they should have been like, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." From New York, it's fire by night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> idiots! Keith, were you that writer in the 1980s? You have to tell us. It's like you being have to a tell cop. us if you were. <laughs> Show us your day. <laughs> Show us your day. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, so no, they they bring him out to shoot him again this time with bazookas, but they miss again even with the bazookas because Jesus is on his side. They also fuck up the my wife bit here. He's like, you idiots, if you're going to miss, I'll send you to work at the manure plant with my wife. Wait, <laughs> no, take you're... my wife in your carpool, please. Wait, you are supposed to say something about my wife <laughs> in bazookas in Soviet Russia manure shit wife you no that's okay <laughs> you what's happening sketch is over <laughs> start again my wife repeat after me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and then okay so y- y- this entire thing is like watching you ever been around like 
three funny people and then another guy, right? And other guy keeps coming up with like things that could be funny potentially, but amazing he's not puns. Funny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fuck everybody. I don't think that's where Noah was going with it. <laughs> yeah. That's where you've been going with this from the beginning. It's fine. It's fine. You do. Is this over Sharknado? This is because we I did Sharknado it. without you, isn't it? So, I watched it anyway. Let's get it out on air. I, it anyway. <laughs> I did my own review. <laughs> oh my God. Heath Awful Movies. It's a one off, one episode. <laughs> All right, so, but, no, but th that's the thing is that this this is constantly, like, the setup that the other guy thinks you're going to make funny for him, but it yep. isn't good, right? Because, like, right after that ends, it, it's, like, coming this fall, Muskogee Vice, get it? It's, like, Miami Vice, but Musco Muskogee, it's a, Muskogee's a small town in Oklahoma. You probably haven't heard of it. You haven't heard of it, but my, uh, my grandma's there. She's a <laughs> farm out there. She said we could drive around her property. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing, right, is that they don't have anywhere to go with this because, yes, absolutely, if, if, if talented comedians were handed the premise, all right, guys, it's like Miami Vice, but in a small town. Okay, go. You might be able to do something with it, but instead we get, get the rednecks sitting around going like, I bet there will be tobacco and sin at the party, and then cops pulling over and yelling at them to go to youth group. Yeah. Yeah. And where they landed, the only idea that they came up with, they made one choice, and it was, imagine if the cops were black, right? What if the <laughs> cops were black? What if we did a race reversal on a time to kill? What if it was like that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, but so we have the rednecks, and they're like, oh, there'd be awesome party and a lot of fornication, and then the cops show up to bust them for not knowing that Jesus loves them. Get it? End of sketch. End of Done. sketch, yes. <laughs> and now it's time for Drunk Guy. <laughs> Not Drunk Guy. This guy is trying to act drunk. That's the entire bit here. Yep. He has never had a drink. Absolutely ever, not. Ever, 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 ever. Everything I ever own and will own and could own says this man has never been intoxicated. Yes. Mm -mm. No, this man is playing drunk like a mean impersonation of Richard Dawkins. That is his <laughs> oh, version <God>. of drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If that's what he was actually doing well, it would have been a good Yeah, bit, no, though. yeah. He, he, did, he didn't pull that off, unfortunately. Like, if he, if this guy actually got drunk... We would have got like five minutes of guilty weeping and possibly <laughs> masturbation. And it would have been amazing, actually. Yeah, it would have been an amazing pretty scene. Pretty good. I would have no. rather watched this actor jerk off and cry at the same time. <laughs> Happily. Well, I mean, that uh, there's a lot of stuff that we watch that I would uh, pick that over. But yeah. <laughs> so, That's Upright Citizens Brigade right there. Yeah. It's good stuff. Thank you. So, yeah, so this is, so they cut in, though, with, like, this fake beer ad, and it's the whole shtick is just, this guy, look, he's drunk. That's pretty funny. This will come back, right? It is. <laughs> Aside from Carmen's ego, it is the only running joke of this show. <laughs> and the Carmen one isn't on purpose. Nope. <laughs> so, and now, okay, so, but then after that's over, Blaine cuts in to, to have a serious talk with us about peer pressure, and I realized suddenly, like, that stuff that we just watched, that was the stuff that was there to, like, keep us entertained so we'd stick around for the boring shit. Yeah, he he thinks we had a lot of fun today, and so now it's time to be serious. Yeah. <laughs> so he starts, he comes on to talk to us about peer pressure, and he's like, look, it's not that peer pressure is bad, it's that your peers are bad, right? You just have to imagine all the apostles watching you when you masturbate, and you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> sure, you got two buddies offering you a cigarette, but you have hundreds of dead Christian ghosts watching you at all times. How's that for peer pressure? <laughs> <laughs> and this is where Blaine Bartle actually uses the phrase, as Christian young people, to start a <laughs> sentence that he was about to say. I was like, absolutely not. You're not mm -mm. a young, you're fucking 45. You're going to play a high school kid in a second. No, <laughs> no. Unacceptable. Also, why was he terrified throughout this whole thing? Um, because he's about to interview world famous celebrity Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and fucking blow it. <laughs> yes, he oh. is. <laughs> he is shaking. Like, and he, he's talking, he's trying to give his, he does this throughout. He has these moments where they give him like five minutes to just talk and it does not go well. It's like someone just off camera's faking like they're about to punch him in the face. And <laughs> keeps up like half flinching and he's shaking and he's worried. But then, yeah, Carmen shows up to save him. Yeah. But it doesn't go well. Well, and I love the, okay, so first of all, the intro does not, is careful not to oversell Carmen, right? He says, this is an exact quote, my guest's music has touched thousands across North America. They're Dark. not even going for tens, just thousands. Fucking Literally Dark. dozens and dozens. <laughs> Can we say and dozens? Dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Literally thousand of people, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go into this interview where clearly this dude, Blaine, has not put any thought whatsoever into what kind of questions he's going to ask. And Carmen wouldn't know a good question if he heard one anyway. So he's like, oh. the, the Q&A is impossibly banal. It's like, so where'd you guys shoot this? He's like, a train station. It's like, you know, that's probably going to be obvious once we're looking at it. <laughs> I guess. I'm <laughs> Fascinating. Fascinating. Train station, huh? Great. Where is that? Denver. Cool. Cool. Yep. You remember when I asked you where you filmed? The job? Um, stupid. <laughs> stupid. Speaking of Denver, uh, how are you today? <laughs> now. Busy? Please. Busy. Oh, cool. 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 Do you have a fun story about Denver? No. no. <laughs> cool. Cool. How, um, how is the weather there in Denver? Busy. Medium? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, okay, so then we get this amazing video about that starts off about how I saw a dude who said he was Christian, but he was smoking cigarettes, motherfucker. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. They show him smoking a cigarette and then putting it out, and then he stubs it out with his foot, and they zoom in on his foot, and there's a pile of, like, ten cigarettes yep. Right there. So this guy just like didn't move at all, just smoked 10 cigarettes in a row and then started dancing and singing. That's what happened in his life that <laughs> yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, it's Old Man Shakes Fisted Cloud, the rock song. Oh, it's amazing. Here's an actual <laughs> line from the fucking song. He says, I saw two brothers go to a sexy movie show. <laughs> And they fucking died. They died. <laughs> they died of secular movie. <laughs> I want to talk about my personal experience with that line. Because I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, he's talking about, like, gay guys going to, like, porn theaters and fucking each other in the back <laughs> row. And then I had to be like, nope, they're just what? mad about seeing secular movies. And I was like, whoa. Mm, I'm pretty sure they're fucking. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Didn't you see them deal drugs at the beginning? I think it's the same guy. Oh, <laughs> you say so. And of course, Carmen is in a tux the whole time, and it's just funny. I mean, I don't, I know that oh. it's like he's not supposed to be funny, but it's goddamn hilarious that he's wandering around in this tux the whole time. Oh my yeah. God. If, if you, if you told me that Carmen's music videos inspired the entirety of Tony and Tina's wedding, I would believe you. <laughs> And if you told me that Carmen's music videos were just what he did that day in real life, I would not be surprised at all. He just has a tuxedo and a like old time microphone in his car at all times. And he's just going to old train stations in Denver, I guess. I don't know. To condemn women for going out dancing. Yeah, right. To, to, to yell at the guy smoking a cigarette outside the abandoned train station. Yeah. So, yeah, so he's, he, we have a verse about how bad cigarettes are. We have a verse about how bad movies with cleavage in them are. And then he's got a verse about two sisters that went to a dancing club. Those are, that's the term he uses is dancing club to drink beer. And they fucking died. They died. <laughs> <laughs> also dead. Yep. And I loved, was the title of this song a little bit more Conviction, or was that just like a refrain? Yeah, well, I believe the title was con, uh, was just Conviction. Conviction, okay. But the refrain is a little bit more Conviction, and I like that it's 
It's a small ass. It's just like, <laughs> well, a bit. what it's you can afford. That or he was repeating his direction over and over again during the music video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he was just yelling at the backup singers the whole time. <laughs> Hey, Blaine Bartles, you want to calm down and stop saying your mantra? Also, why are you in everything in this entire show, Blaine Bartles? <laughs> okay, so, and I want just one other comment on the song, because the, the bridge, right? The bridge where he just starts coming and going, a little more conviction, you know, and stuff like that. It, the bridge was very clearly making fun of the rest of the song. <laughs> and okay, And then, of course, it ends with him like, forlornly and profoundly taking his bow tie off like this train station isn't good enough for my bow tie and he throws it to the ground but then the guy who was smoking the cigarettes finds it puts it on and then he becomes a non-smoking christian <laughs> oh it's like the ring now <laughs> carmen's gonna crawl out of a television set and screw up his face <laughs> i wanted the guy to be like holy shit are you tony bennett Fuck you, okay? Fuck <laughs> you. Tony Bennett wishes. Tony Every Bennett time. wishes. <laughs> Is that no. the only guy with a bow tie? Bow ties are everybody's thing. Anybody can have a bow tie. You have to let people have bow ties. You, you'll be hearing from my thousands thing. of fans. <laughs> 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 All right, so now, so that video ends not a moment too soon. And then we miss it right away, right? Because the next skit is the Jerusalem news update. Oh, God. With Ned Koppelstein yeah. is the name. Yeah. This is what my depression tells me Bible Peace Theater is. <laughs> in case you're wondering what my self-image is like in the depths of despair, <laughs> this is what I think Bible Peace Theater sounds like. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're doing the burning of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or whatever, who, however the hell you... They, they pronounce it a different way every time they say it, so I don't feel like I'm under any obligation to get it right. Mm -hmm, definitely <laughs> but they're like yeah someone in their writer's room said you know what would make a great premise for a comedy skit that time they burned those guys alive for not worshipping Nebuchadnezzar Judaism also more generally would just Jewish would make a premise oh. for a comedy sketch yeah so Ned Koppelstein goes to the roving reporter Jewy McJewstein Walter Cronkite I guarantee <laughs> yeah. there's no way Anyone in that room was good enough to come up with Walter Cronkite. Nope. Um, so clearly I wasn't that guy from the 80s because this was bad and not funny. <laughs> if you're here now, you're safe now. <laughs> Am I? Am I? <laughs> Do you feel safe? I don't feel safe. <laughs> he hasn't quit smoking yet. We're fine. So is <laughs> So, yeah, so they go to the roving reporter who's doing his Jew voice, which is just like mostly he can't remember to do it. Right. But it's just a lot of loogie hocken sounds thrown in there. Yeah. In at best, Ugh. it is Groucho Marx. <laughs> at worst, Goebbels wanders into frame and is like, hey, man, can you can I just tell you? It's <laughs> really, <offensive. laughs> it just really it's not cool. It's a little bit broad for our <laughs> propaganda post. <laughs> <laughs> Would you just tone yeah. it down? <laughs> also uh, they seem to think Israeli people are Rastafarian karate pirates <laughs> mm -hmm. that's what they're quite certain Israel looks like yep. in its entirety yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so they've got this guy he's standing there he's interviewing people about watching these three Jews get thrown into the fire but not burn they do two full interviews. They have no jokes to go with this, right? The whole thing is like, can you imagine if like they had CNN back then? It would look like this. If you can't imagine it, here's what it would look like. Exactly like this, kind of. Oh, but come on. They had the lemon joke the, with the lemon. Lemon. A guy had a lemon. Is that Was that a joke or was okay. that just... Yeah. Did that what guy that just a have a lemon? To? <laughs> that was... um. It's fruit work. It's just good fruit work. <laughs> okay, good. Because I literally just read, I just wrote, wait, he's making lemonade? Someone acknowledge the lemonade. Why is he making lemonade? <laughs> oh, this guy, this actor is quite certain he's the John Belushi of Christian comedy. Oh, yeah, He's doing everything. He's not at all, but he's, he thinks he is. And he, at one point he was just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drink this Arnold Palmer and have an entire lemon 
and just like do a bunch of fruit work and never acknowledge it. <laughs> I'm going to do it for the skit. Yeah. Yeah. Makes no sense. It's like the bee costumes in like the first season of SNL. Yeah, it makes no say, sense. I was going to say it's right up there with Samurai Chef. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but it's not because he doesn't ever like slice a lemon with a sword. That would have been awesome. Yeah. No. He's just like doing my, le- he's, he's squeezing it. And we, we actually get to watch him learn that, you know, on the fly, a whole lemon doesn't really work as a garnish. <laughs> he's trying to like pretend like he's squeezing it in and nothing's happening. And his fruit work is kind of falling apart. He tries to balance it on the edge for a second and fails. <laughs> yeah, yep. And it starts to fall behind the glass. And you watch him forget his lines as he's like, so I was saying, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, God. Thank God I cut the lemon. Did I so, say lemon out loud? I have so much. Damn it. Lemon space work left to do. I well, acknowledge it. Ooh. So yeah, and to give you and that by the way, that's how good this is. Is that we just had to spend, we had to drill in for eight minutes on the lemon because what else are we going to talk about? Mm-hmm. That was the highlight of the yeah, thing. Oh, absolutely. Yep, doing lemon work yeah. was the highlight of this entire episode by far. Yeah, buckle the fuck up. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so then they finish up the interview, then they go back to Ned Koppelstein, who says, this just in, if you say mean shit about you, God, we'll be we'll tear you from limb to limb, like in the Bible. The book that us good guys like. We could have, could have not included this in this part of the show, which is crazy, right? We could have just not had the drawing and quartering ending at the end <laughs> of our story. We took extra time to put it in. <laughs> And Come to think of it, a lot sketch. of this stuff, <laughs> of this whole show, could have been cut out. We could <laughs> cut out the part where I can't read my lines <laughs> off the paper that's right in front of me, but we're not doing that either, apparently. All right. Jesus Christ. The whole cast, like, this is not Blaine Bartles at this point. This is one of the other guys, also borderline illiterate, trying to read off his cue cards, can't do it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Cannot. No, no. Everybody in this cast, like, when, the, you know, remember uh, first grade, you had, like, the reading groups, and it was like, the tigers and the sharks and then like the manatees. These are all manatees. One hundred percent green group. Yep. Yeah. All rhinos. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll tell you what. After describing that skit, I feel like various parts of me need to be washed. So we're gonna take a break, but we'll be back soon with even more Fire by Nitty. Night 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 night. <laughs> Nitte. 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 This is the Jerusalem News Network. I'm Chewy Juname. Today marks the happy news that several children were eaten by bears for making fun of a bald guy. Local officials have issued a statement. Trish? Thanks, Bernie Sanders. According to local politicians, the children getting eaten by bears was a good thing because they made fun of a bald guy, and that's not cool. Excuse me, sir? Sir? Uh, yeah, me? What? You saw the children being eaten by bears. Was it great? Was it great? Uh, no. Hmm. Were you aware they were mocking a bald guy? Yeah, but like, you know, just yell at them. I don't know. Don't sick bears at them, right? Uh, follow-up question. Do you see that bear behind you? I do. Yes, I see it. Excellent. Back to you, Bernie Sanders. Thank you, Trish. Next up. Will the sun go out if we kill God's kid? Yes, it will. And we're back and we're going to rejoin the action with Blaine chatting with Carmen about the dangers of peer pressure that they, as middle-aged men, face on a regular basis. (laughs) Young Christians. No, you're not. (laughs) Carmen's even older. And fucking Carmen, like he says, like, well, well, what do you think about peer pressure? And Carmen's like, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines peer pressure. I don't know. It's the fucking... His example is, (laughs) I wanted to stop doing ticketed events. That was my choice. Mine. Well, yeah, right. No, his argument is no, no. It's not that people weren't buying tickets to my show. It's that I decided to stop selling tickets and just do free shows because God wanted me to. Not because I wasn't selling enough. It had nothing to do with it. <laughs> and Carmen's getting winded at this point because he's so goddamn excited to talk about peer pressure. That's what's happening in this comedy show. 
Blaine yeah. Bartles is like, all right, let's take a break from all that comedy. Everybody calm the fuck down. Let's talk about a serious topic, yeah. peer pressure, for a while. Yeah. The kindest term for what he is right now is worked up. <laughs> well, there was also a bit of a telling line here where he's talking about, like, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can do. And he says, and I quote, if you decide to really get into drugs, you can do it because you put your mind to it. And then Blaine goes, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what doesn't require putting your mind to it? Doing drugs. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, that's super duper that's easy. That's not to say you can't put your mind to it. You, you can. can if you want. It's <laughs> going to happen either way. Mind to it, mind not to it. You're doing drugs. I was going to say, several people on this show have really put their heart and soul into doing drugs. I don't want to play down their accomplishments. Well, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't, like, bring out the art of it. That's great if you're a connoisseur and you want to do that, but it doesn't have to happen that way. Saying, Noah made that lady in Denver cry a single tear when he ordered from her. <laughs> not take that away from him. I love, too, that just right on the heels of Carmen explaining to us that, you know, he could sell tickets to his concert if he wanted to. He just doesn't want to. Blaine explains that he could have sex with women if he wanted to, but he's saving himself for marriage. It's like nobody yep. brought that up, Blaine. Why are you telling us that? <laughs> yeah, he's, I don't know. He's just like, you know, 80 percent of kids lose their virginity before graduating high school. That. I read that, but that has to be high. That's, That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> who, who has sex before they're 38 and they're living in their mom's basement doing a comedy show? And uh, what? Who's talking? Who wants to fuck an apple pie? Because an, <laughs> an apple pie counts. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so he asks Carmen's advice on not fucking. And I'm not going to say much for Carmen, but I don't think he's a good person to turn to for advice on not fucking, okay? I'm sorry, I don't think he's an authority on that. Carmen I mean, is a he's, lovely gentleman. He's a good authority on not wanting to fuck, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and this is, I, I'm amazed how many times we're going to double down on this. This is the first time that Blaine introduces his whole, like, you know, you can't be a wimp and live for Jesus. You got to be tough, like a pretty tough guy, like manly to love Jesus, huh? Yeah, if you think about it, loving Jesus is way cooler than Fucking women and <laughs> people liking your music is the stakes that I set up with my own sentences on my show where I control the on and the off of the camera. Let's find out what's hot, huh? Yeah. Let's watch Not My Kid from Health Class, but then we'll do what's hot. Yes. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. So now it's time for their, their what's hot segment. And... <laughs> Okay, gentlemen, very important. <laughs> Stopping the review right now. Pop quiz. Before this segment happened, what did you think they thought was hot? Go. I was going to say the hellfire that awaits those brothers that watch the sexy movie from okay. Carmen's song. Good, good. <laughs> uh, I had abstinence. <laughs> Marshmallow peeps. Uh, <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> No, but it's literally like a little in events calendar that they had going. <laughs> Hosted by uh, Heath. Who do you Seth have? Seth Andrews in 1996. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm quite certain this is Seth masking his beautiful chocolatey voice so he doesn't sound too unchristian for this thing. He would have been way too cool with his real voice. To the extent that I almost sent a screenshot of it to Seth and was like, buddy. <laughs> Is this you? <laughs> so, yeah, so he cuts in to tell us all about, like, where you could see Petra live soon and shit. They got a new lead singer, and he's he loves Jesus, too. And then they they go into the whole... Yeah, but he's from a secular band. Yeah. The new lead singer. They made a big deal. They were like, so, you know, the lead singer, Petra, he's, he's out. But they got a new one from, like, a real band. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. a band with... Dozens and dozens of listeners. And did you hear me? And did you hear me say the band, second for real. Wasn't a mistake. Wasn't a retake. I meant. <laughs> and then, of course, they explained to us how um, you're going to see more Christian music on MTV now that DeGarmo and Key's new kick ass video is out there. <laughs> oh, yep. 
They mentioned six 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 here, which is the isn't that the yeah, one of the ones? No, yeah, so we yep. reviewed this, of course, on God Awful Minis or God Awful Music rather over on Scathing. Uh this was yeah. the band the, the video that was originally deemed too hot for MTV, too violent for MTV. <laughs> and boy were the Christians <laughs> proud of that. Guys, we were too fucking hard for MTV. The Christian shit was. <laughs> also, they tell us about Petra and DeGarmo and Key going on tour together. How did we miss and that I shit, right? So fucking love to be alive for that. <laughs> to go to this, these shows. I would have I would have followed them to the saddest tour ever. They show yes. us the cities. It's like Tear out Indiana, Dayton, <laughs> Ohio, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the big one. And then all the way back to, that's right, Fort Wayne, motherfucking Indiana to close it out. Sorry, no, weren't done yet. Champaign, Des Moines, Minneapolis, Springfield, and wait for it. The Big Apple Core, Toledo, Ohio. Oh, Toledo, Ohio. Right. <laughs> The Big Apple of the Midwestern part of Ohio. <laughs> They're basically the Dayton of Northwest Ohio. <laughs> and we're not just throwing that the fuck out there. We mean it. We so... fucking mean it. Okay, but here's the thing. I don't want to go to those shows for a variety of reasons. I want to be on that tour bus. <laughs> like, oh is it just everyone scrambling for the same gun with a single bullet in the chamber? <laughs> Because that's what I'm picturing. Or is it like the most competitive Settlers of Catan League you've ever seen? I think it might be both. And I want to be on that bus, too. There has, there have, There's Christian bands touring now, right? Can't oh, we yeah. like figure out a way to get in somehow involved with this? I, I think we could just ask. You know, they'd be like, you, we, we'd be, we could pretend that we give a shit and they would be. Yeah, we and, could oh. donate my, my Subaru that's half on fire. Yeah. And be like, yeah, we do need one more car. Yeah. Absolutely. Patreon goal, we will go on tour with a Christian rock band. <laughs> and just boo them from the front <laughs> stage every time, yeah. And then, okay, so then we get the top 10 Christian song countdown. And it was so depressing when I realized that that annoying shit in the background was the number one song. But, uh, yeah, that's that. And then they recommend a few good Christian books about peer pressure. Oh my God, they're the best because they're all called peer pressure and watching <laughs> watching baby Seth Andrews realize that he has to read a list that contains the word peer pressure over and over again, like he's trapped in an alternate dimension. <laughs> worth being... Okay, so this next one, peer pressure. Okay. Hey, <laughs> Alan, motherfucker, do we get any books? Any about peer pressure that aren't called peer pressure? Stop crying. Answer the question. Are the cue cards having a stroke? No, it's all peer pressure. It's 10 books, 10 songs. All right. All called peer pressure. So that's what's hot, in case you were wondering. Yeah. They also do a book review here. Seriously, like b -b 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 book review. <laughs> and then they close out that. Yeah. All right. So then Blaine is going to talk to us more about peer pressure again. He says... Like he, he has this whole like speech that he gives about how dull Christianity is the problem. It's got to be interesting. Like this show, right? Like this show stops mm -hmm. in the middle to yell at us about how boring it is. <laughs> yep. Um, and then he <laughs> accidentally drifts off into a gay fantasy of construction worker Jesus. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he He's like, does. He is exactly what happens listener <laughs> yes, he's like you please. know we've painted a negative picture of jesus with the soft hair and the smooth skin but this guy was a carpenter he was jesus a fucks vaginas <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> he's like a construction worker and his his rough hands would grab you around the throat just firm enough to know he's in charge but soft <laughs> enough to know you're safe <laughs> I'm Blake Bartles, and I currently have a terrible master, a crippling masturbation addiction. <laughs> so, yeah, he says literally, quote, this guy would of Jesus. Jesus is this guy in question. This guy would make Rambo look like a wimp. End quote. Come on. You all want to see Jesus last blood. Yeah. <laughs> More than I want to see Rambo last blood. Yes. OK. And then he introduces a monthly segment, which he assures us will have lots of comedy i bet i said wrote in my notes here i'm willing to bet it doesn't have any comedy i was right it didn't have any comedy but 
they're tagging in a different show, right? Like they're like, yep. we thought we could do this. This is hard. Co- sitcom. We're going to do a sitcom now in the middle of our show. Sitcom. The medium of sketch anything was too demanding. <laughs> so they've shifted over to sitcom, which will make up more than half of their program. Yeah. No, it's like yeah. it's full 30 minute sitcom in here. Yeah. Well, they've shifted from sketch to podcast interview to listing books with the same title <laughs> to sitcom. Yeah. For the rest, pretty much the entire rest of the show. Yeah, damn near. Yeah. And, and this, but this sitcom, it has its own opening credits and everything. We see Blaine. I was like, I put in my notes here. Like, I'm like, oh, please tell me he's the wacky neighbor. No, he's the teenage son. <laughs> The star football quarterback. Oh, yes, God. yes. <laughs> okay, how much did you guys want it to like be Blaine Bartle, and then there's another character also played by Blaine Bartle, and then another character, and eventually you realize <laughs> the entire sitcom is just Blaine Bartle shuffling in and out of sixteen outfits. <laughs> eventually, he's just fighting John Malkovich yeah. on the side <laughs> of the Jersey <laughs> Tour bike. Exactly. All right, so we open up on a little kid and dad sitting around in the living room, and the little kid's like, hey, dad, who's this person you have a police sketch of on your desk? And he's like, that's a drug dealer, won't matter until middle of act two. Mm -hmm. And then mom comes in, and they try to do some banter with the kid. They try to, like, do some comedy, some shtick here between the mom and the kid, except it just comes off as, like, threats of physical abuse. Right. Well, the best part is it's it's comedy. It's family sitcom comedy. If you had only ever seen like a picture of a child, <laughs> you'd be like, Psh, I bet you can't reach jars, blonde <laughs> hair, money. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm a grown up. Yeah, this is a shtick about child abuse. That's what happens. Here. Yeah, yeah. Dad threatens to physically abuse the son. So he goes upstairs. Meanwhile, we cut the teenage sister who's with her bad boy boyfriend, who is a middle-aged balding guy. <laughs> totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> normal. Great. Also, normal amount of finger guns in his 10 seconds. <laughs> I would say a reasonable amount of finger guns for 10 seconds scene would be 300. 300 finger guns. Constant. That's what I would do. Omnipresent finger guns. <laughs> I thought we were going to get a subplot about his inability to let go of the finger guns. <laughs> Stop saying pew, 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 Stop it. <laughs> like there's a Mexican standoff at the end of the thing where it's just like, put him down, man. Put him down. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Scarn, FBI. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, but this guy, the middle aged boyfriend, wants her to go to the big drug party with him on Friday night. And she's pretty flattered to have been invited to the big middle-aged drug party and then they introduced us to the fact that blaine is supposed to be the teenage son in this thing (laughs) he's his own kurt cameron in his little mind he was gonna be kurt cameron oh amazing yeah he runs in and he's like so you guys know how I was the starting quarterback on the football team last year? And also you know all of us wrote, sports? nope. Everyone nope. say that it's established that I've been good at sports last year. <laughs> Everybody said yes. Cool. But not this year. I'm not. There's a, another guy. And literally dad's like, you're gay? Are you saying you're gay? What's happening? Right it's the best. Yes. He leaps to his feet and he's like, son, America is about competition. And I'll tell you why. I lost once. And then he sits down and stares off in the opposite direction. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This is dad's lesson here is they don't want a good arm to be the starting quarterback for the football team. They want a good Christian leader. leader. Don't worry about the arm. And um, that sounds like dumb advice, but it literally did work for Tim Tebow. He literally yeah, that's true. did exactly that and became an oh, wow. NFL quarterback. <laughs> You're right. Wow, that's sad as fuck. All right, so yeah, so Sis comes in, uh, Connie, and she tells him, hey, I'm going to go to a party on Friday. And then she sees the police sketch of the drug dealer on the desk, and she says, not with this guy here, D- different guy, not this yeah. guy. What's this boy you're going out with? Um, He's... Judge Roy Moore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
okay, that's fine then. Sorry, I thought you were going to go out with the drug dealer. All right, go ahead. <laughs> and I love, I love the phrasing they use here. She's like, yeah, so um, mom and dad just uh, want to let you know what's happening. I'm going to a high school get together because uh, I'm in high school. Well, we, we just call it a get together because, uh, again, I'm in high school. We, we just say again. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm real. <laughs> But yeah, but then she sees the sketch and realizes that her boyfriend's the drug dealer. And oh, shit, she has to run to her room and make an important phone call to him, right? Okay. I have so many questions about this 30 seconds that happens next. Uh Uh-huh. Who is the little brother on the phone with when she comes in the room? Sex line. (laughs) Absolutely sex line. Uh, I figured it was a conference call. He was just like running the elementary school. Like, all right, great job, everybody, with the uh, elementary school stuff. We'll pick this up next week i don't know yeah (laughs) so yeah he she comes in and the little brother's like uh chilling on her bed and they try to do the sibling rivalry thing uh between these two so the little brother goes out out of the room and he listens in on her phone call well she calls her drug dealer boyfriend to ask if he's a drug dealer so apparently he lives in a drum solo with the world's saddest pile of cocaine. <laughs> so <laughs> they're trying so hard not to pan out enough for us to see that this is a single wide trailer, but this is a single wide trailer. They're also oh. trying not to pan out wide enough for us to see the baby powder canister they poured <laughs> entirely out onto the table in front of him. Yeah, hey, hint, guys, when you cut up cocaine, usually you don't get little clouds puffing up around it. <laughs> I mean, I get excited. So whatever. <laughs> but he's he's not cutting up lines of cocaine. He's just moving cocaine with a razor blade. Yep. <laughs> just moving it around in a giant circle. He's just yep. making it into a giant circle again. Like, I want him to take out a toilet paper roll and just snort the whole thing. <laughs> all at once in a big circle. Put it over his face. No. All right. Patreon goal. Hey, patrons, you already hit that Patreon call, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> so, yeah, so she uh, she gets on the phone with him and she has to beat around the bush about it a little bit. But finally, she says, do you do drugs? And he goes, and I love this line. He goes, he's sitting there cutting up his or <laughs> taking his cocaine for a walk, whatever it is he's doing. And he goes, <laughs> no, I don't do drugs. I just smoke weed. I'm like, all right, nice, nice. OK, I love it. Fantastic. And then there's this really weird moment that makes no sense within the universe of this film where he makes a good case for, like, you should smoke weed and eventually you will anyway, so you might as well do it now. And they never really push back against that. Nope. Right? Yeah. (laughs) Right. The sister's like, oh, okay, you just just the pot. Can you not smoke it around me? And he's like, no, I'm going to do that. I'm going to smoke it around you. We're both going to do drugs together. It's going to be a lot of fun. They're delightful. And she's like, okay. (laughs) That's fair. Scene, I guess. He also says, like, are you afraid of pot? At which point she replies, like, no, 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 no. I was I was peeing my pants already about something else. It was a different <laughs> thing. But yeah, so she gets off the phone and little bro comes in to spring his blackmail trap. He heard every word of it and knows that she's going out with a drug dealer and won't tell mom and dad if she'll take the trash out for him next week. Or whatever. Classic brother sister shenanigans. Better do my chores or I'll tell them that you're dating a statutory rapist criminal. Yeah. Not not stat well. Yeah. Not okay. yet, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then we uh, th- then we go to that remember that Clore's beer ad from before with the drunk guy? Well Oh gosh. I hope we get a follow up. We sure do. Here the fuck it comes. They're gonna tie <laughs> this up. <laughs> And a nice little button. And hey, credit where credit's due. SNL never had the fucking balls to do full bedpan humor. And Fire by Night did. (laughs) (laughs) Did they, though? Because they, I mean, they tried. So the guy who was drunk before, he was, you know, drinking Clore's beer. He's in the hospital now because he had too many chlores and his liver's fallen out or he's got liver cancer or whatever. Yeah. And they go over and the nurse takes a bedpan out of his hospital bed. <laughs> it's, it's what they think a bedpan is. It's a lasagna pan. It is a lasagna <laughs> pan. That is true. It's literally just a tin lasagna pan next to him in bed. <laughs> like you would just like angle your, your ass over it and shit 
sideways or P sideways. I don't know. What I, they can, think ma- I can make that work. Yeah, he's like, I drank a lot of beer, so now I wrecked my car and I lost my family and my liver's failing. And then we cut to his headstone. Get it? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, because if you drink beer, you'll die. Yeah, beer it kills people. That was the that was the whole bit. <laughs> yeah, if you fuck your brother in the back of a porn theater, you die. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Go out dancing, you die. Death. So, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Right now, as we speak, we are in a gag commercial that's in a sitcom that's in a skit show. So. Quick before this beer ad spawns a tiny internal puppet show or something and reveals that we're caught in a stupidity fractal. We're going to take a break to spin a top, but first. Let's doodly do out. Doodly do out. <laughs> yeah. Doodly do. Doodly do. Doodly do. <laughs> but first, let me give act three of sub act two the hard sell. Will Connie get railed by the divorce guy that you thought worked at that pawn shop and turned out to actually just hang out there? Is there any role that Blaine Bartell can't play? Will we actually miss Carmen before the sitcom thing wraps up? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the hastily edited conclusion of Fire by Night, Episode 1. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. And now back to America's favorite sitcom, The Christians. Whoa there, scamp. What's the big hurry? Oh boy, Pop. Do I have news for you? Did you finally get that paper route? Guys, there's no laugh track. You got to just keep talking. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Um, so n- news, eh? You- yeah, Pop. See, me and the boys, we were down at the creek. You and know, when I was in the shit, there was a little river right by the camp. Beautiful little place. Used to go there to think. About a week into station, the water began to stink, though, and it became undrinkable. Um, And uh, were- so, yeah, so me and uh, Black Joe... We go to check it out, right? And right there at the tree line, we found, you know, the bodies. Mother and a baby, single bullet through both of them. The stink just dripping off them into the water we'd been pissing in. Never told nobody this, but I wonder if I'm the one that killed them. If drinking them was some unholy way of the world bringing it back on me. Making me swallow what we'd done. You know what I'm saying? I saw a frog is the end of the story. That's great, son. Frog. The Christians. And we're back for more of this shit. When we left off, Connie was about to get railed and get rails. And we're going to rejoin the action with Dad relaxing after a hard day at the station. He's looking at the newspaper, pissed off about how crappy them cowboys are. Okay. I have a theory that someone was like, they just kept pitching their I need to call the Cowboys pussies lines into every sketch. And they were like, you know what? We'll put it at the beginning of a scene of family first. Are you happy? Because <laughs> he does like a, a six minute fucking Nikki Silver esque monologue about how much he hates the Cowboys. And then the entire show restarts like an old lawnmower. <laughs> and then. Blaine comes in with a floating mullet. Maybe there's a guy under it. Maybe there's not. It's the only thing I can see when it's on screen. Oh, I was one nice youth pastor away from this being the extent of my comedy career. And I want to thank everyone listening and on the podcast for that not being the case. You don't think I'm two community theater productions and a methamphetamine addiction away from this guy. You think too much of me. Uh, I would enjoy watching that, especially because these guys overrun the camera frame by like so much yes. and have to like yes. skid to a stop and then come back into it. Yes. And I want to watch Eli do that forever. <laughs> Takes quite a bit of practice to outrun a three camera set. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they had one camera that they were moving around in between. Yeah. <laughs> you say hello to all three of them. Sorry. Sorry. Hello. 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 <laughs> scene begins. So they're, they come in and they're talking about how that new quarterback that's better than Blaine sure is a party animal. You know, he probably does the drugs and stuff. <laughs> it's going to be quite the high school get together later. Going to be crazy. Yeah. Big drugs, sodomy, Judaism party. <laughs> We're not going, <laughs> of course, but it's going to be great. We're choosing not to be there because we are practicing. Hiking the ball because together. we are anti-Semitic. Nope. 
Okay. Nope. <laughs> I thought, what you? What'd you say? Hike. Inside Hike. thoughts. <laughs> I love you. So they, <laughs> so they walk off. Mom and dad are sitting there uh, after they leave, and th- th- here's dad's whole thought. Those boys, I tell you, that was his whole thought. And then they start wondering if the drug party that Blaine was talking about is the same party that their daughter's going to go to. So they, they bring Connie in to ask her and say, like, hey, you know, is this big party you're going to? Is that that's not at Drugtopia, is it? It's a Drugtopia. <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, at which point dad again stands up, stares into the middle distance. And I swear to you, audience, this is real. I should have gotten you the timestamp, but it is worth your viewing pleasure. He goes, you know, when I was in Vietnam, I had a commanding <laughs> officer who I really looked up to. End of fucking sentence. Yep. End of segment. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's like my commander asked me in Vietnam. Are you going to a sodomy Judaism <laughs> drugs party at a fuck dungeon farm? Well, I was going to. But... No. What? I loved him like I never loved your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you can't go to the party. You can't go to the yeah, party. Yeah, that's the key, though. The key is, A, that dad has terrible crippling PTSD, and B, that she is not allowed to go to the drug party. So she storms off you with this. Like, Judaism? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you never let me go to any of the Judaism parties. Yeah, but dad forbids you and she storms off. And then we cut to this post-dinner scene that dad opens with the literal line, quote, thanks, honey, that's a humdinger of a meal, end quote. Are people still saying humdinger? Nope. I mean, they were in the 80s. No, they weren't. No? <laughs> when were they saying it? I want to bring that back. I like that. 1950s. What was the three-year period where humdinger was just 1952 totally fine. through 55. That was it. Yeah, I can nail that America down was you. great again. It was a humdinger <laughs> of a country. Yeah. <laughs> Make America a humdinger again, yeah. And they managed to fuck up the she doesn't cook very well jokes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because they mentioned liver au gratin, which sounds fucking amazing. <laughs> and that's supposed to be like a bad thing in... This little they fuck little up moment. so much because they're just trying for generic sitcom stuff, but they they keep missing by so far. Because now it's time for the little the the younger brother to do something wacky, so he asks them to build him a nuclear reactor. Yep, but again, there's not a there's not a follow up joke. There's the no. setup because again, he read about the observational humor, so he was like, "All right, what if the kid wanted a nuclear reactor?" <laughs> End of bit. Absolutely not. We're a coal and oil family only. <laughs> no nuclear reactors. So yeah, yeah, no, that's the whole thing. Is like, yeah, what would? Oh my god, that'd be hilarious. What that? What, what would that be like? And then somebody says, well, he'd probably say, "Hey, Dad, can you build me a nuclear reactor?" And Dad would say, "No." All right, oh, right, yeah, Dad, we got that that's written it, down. Right yeah, we done don't with need that. anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Try to say nuclear one more time. Yeah. Though, that's <laughs> and then, of course, the, the daughter comes in and they're like, so what are you going to do tonight, honey? And she's like, not go to a drug Judaism party. And then storms off. I'm not going to get coked, snorted off my pone. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yeah, mom thinks maybe they were a little too hard on her. And then Blaine comes in and lives out that fantasy that he's been wanting to live out since he was nine years old. He runs in and turns to a man that he's paying to be there and says, Dad, I made first string quarterback. Yeah. That's a sad, sad moment. It's dark. That's <laughs> that's dark. And I fake a vulgarity for charity roast every year so people have to say nice things to me. So, you know, it's, it's a lot when I'm judging someone. <laughs> I'm starting for the football team. I'm not gay anymore, technically, right? That means I'm not gay. <laughs> That means it doesn't count anymore, right? <laughs> it does, son. Yeah. So <laughs> he's got to run off to youth group, though. He's like, he's like, hey, well, you, I should make you food. And it's like, no, no, we're doing the gag where you're bad at cooking. So I'll, I gotta, I'm going to run off and get a burger, blah, blah, blah. I don't want your way, your truth, <laughs> and your life. <laughs> right? Because of that Vietnam moment out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we need to watch all the rest of the episodes because in my head, canonically, right, so. dad's PTSD gets now worse we cut and to worse sometime later every in the episode. Evening, Mom and dad are playing Bibleopoly or something, and dad gets a call from the department, 
And I know that usually when you see people do phone conversations on TV, they do the too fast talking for the other guy to have been saying anything. They <laughs> have nothing on this dad. He's like, hi, what's that? There's a murderer on the loose. It's time for me to go. Okay, goodbye. I will see you later. Hello, operator. Puts phone <laughs> down. Puts on coat. Walks out. Exit. Father. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. under. Okay. I actually, I, I did you the favor of bringing you a clip along with my imagining of the conversation on the other end of the phone. All right. Morgan. Johnny's been here for the apartment. It's 730. I wonder what they want. Hello? Hello, is this Lieutenant Collins? Yes, this is Lieutenant uh, Collins. Well, sir, we have yes. a we have a major yeah. a major Where? truck at I'll the farm. Right What's going on? You know what? I'll fuck myself. I'll just I didn't want to finish that sentence anyway. But yeah, like that. So now he's going to go off to the drug party for the big bust. Yeah. So it, he, he goes like, he's like, before I leave, though, go get Connie so we can tell her we told her so. But Connie's gone. She must have snuck off to the party after all. And she's about to get drug busted. Oh, no. Where? Oh, she's right there. Yeah. She's <laughs> it turns out they didn't have the money to do multiple sets here. So, no, she she decided not to go to the party and she's coming in. <laughs> they open the door and she's outside yeah. <laughs> because apparently they tested this on audiences and they were like, burn the witch. And they were like, OK, OK, <laughs> we can't have more than four seconds. Three seconds is the max on that. <laughs> they killed yeah. our first Connie actress as an audience. So we need to <laughs> That's actually Blaine Bartle's wife in real life. Oh, is it really? Connie? Yeah. Oh, Connie. The, the, yeah, he plays he plays the brother and sister with his wife here. <laughs> oh, my God. That's healthy. The surprise ending of this episode colors everything so differently. Oh, yes. <laughs> the pain in Connie's eyes makes so much sense. Yeah? <laughs> this is our Memento episode, podcast listener. Just so you know. Just so you know. <laughs> Gotta listen to it backwards. All right, so yeah, and then the little kid comes in and pretends he's the comic relief one last time. I don't even know if the kid knows that what he's saying is supposed to be funny or not. Yeah, he's like, oh, boy. Goodbye. Yep, that's it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we're at a concert, whether we like it or not, God damn it. Hey, smash cut music video is an innovative film technique, like it or not. <laughs> So, yeah, so apparently now we're listening to Russ Taff sing to us about how he's not going to bow down to the giant golden butt plug that I believe he's describing. Yeah, it's unclear. Interesting. I need to listen to those lyrics again. I, I missed that part. Yeah, I did enjoy right away watching him try to clap and <laughs> miss <laughs> an entire audience clapping and somehow none of them hitting the beat. Like statistically, yeah. you just think that many people in a room, <laughs> one of them would hit a beat. No, no, no. Also, <laughs> this is Russ Taff. Is that the guy's yeah, name? Yeah. Uh -huh. He keeps going for the audience singing one of the lyrics in his song. The lyric is no. And, you know, like living on a prayer where yeah. you, know, you put your mic out there and it's the saddest fucking thing because they never do it. Like four people are like, no. Well, and also the line is no, right? Like the fact that he's getting his audience to scream no at him, just it kind of takes the wind out of that a little bit. Uh, but sure yeah, th does. this is a song, by the way, about being peer pressured to worship a pagan god. I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have been there now that I think about it. I kind of like this song, though. I got into it. I want to point out. Two, or, two out of three of the people on this podcast have been there. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? So you like this one? You're a, you're a Taft fan, are you? Oh, I would absolutely go to a Russ Taft concert. If they were in, say, I don't know, Toledo, Ohio, <laughs> or Dayton, or Fort Wayne. You know, one of the oh. big metropolitan areas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One of the music absolutely. hotbeds of this great nation. Yeah. How do we get this guy to, like, open for our next live show? We How do we get Russ Taft? Him. We simply ask him. I was going to say. Key. Did, I, well, did I don't Garmo think you're go going to get Garmo and Key back in the same room together after what happened. But yeah, yeah. We'll get, we can get one or the other. You pick which one you want. Maybe we can get Zack Attack from Saved by the Bell. I don't know. I just want I want a bunch of old bands. I want to put them back together. <laughs> All right. So now it's time for Blaine to get real with us one last time. And he opens with this 
this is a pretty clever joke. He says, if you think about it, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were pretty cool, huh? Get it? Because they were on fire. Cool. Pretty cool. Huh? Right? Huh? King James version. I was earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but he's just telling that Bible story, but he's doing it in his funny voice. So he thinks that makes it into comedy. Right? The fact that he says a lot of words sometimes all close together. But Noah, he's sitting backwards on his chair. <laughs> backwards. So bad. That's not how chairs work. <laughs> <laughs> I just found it incredibly relatable. It's, <laughs> it's like Bible Peace Theater had a stroke, this whole thing. <laughs> An anti-Semitic stroke. And it's a one-man show somehow. And it's oh. a gunpoint. <laughs> Blake Bartles has to do the whole thing or like me trying to do that. Somehow Eli set up a prank where I have to deliver all the voices and he's got a gun and like a hostage with a parents <laughs> scenario like saw. I don't know. Yep. That's the feel. Nope. That is that's a really accurate description of this show is prank war post me and Noah's death scathing atheist Bible peace theater. Segment. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. But yeah, so he he tells us this story again and he says and you know who else was there where they tried to burn him in the fire jesus in that old testament story because we reappropriated it for our religion anyway the point is that you should take a stand for jesus in your school or work because it's america in 1986 and it's not christian enough <laughs> then he, and then and then he's like yeah i feel like this isn't going very well let's use the other camera hello other camera. <laughs> <laughs> there we go much better that's my serious camera there. Shooting yeah. from the money side now. <laughs> my uh, left side is the one with talent, apparently. So this is perfect. This yeah. is perfect. So, yeah. So he turns to camera three, gets serious with us now, and he gives us this whole big, long speech about how all the apostles and everything were prophets, not pansies. Pansies. That's his word. So then he digs into the prophet versus pansy comparison. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been equating those two words forever. This really made me think. I <laughs> thought those were synonyms. They're not. No. Uh -uh. Look, I grew up in the 1990s in upstate New York. I've seen some pretty impressive gay fear. But the fact that they caught this <laughs> on film, credit where credit's due. He practically gives himself a wedgie while jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, wait. We got to talk about his. We got to talk about his acronym. Because this is the most amazing swing and a miss at an acronym ever. And it's the first letter where he misses, right? So he's, <laughs> this is his acronym for bold, okay? The word bold. B is for back down. No way. I'm don't. not going to back down. Don't. Back down. Don't do the opposite. Comma, don't. Do, yes. Not back down. Is it, is it too late to make the acronym dulled? Back, back down no not classic that works it's the 80s wayne's world it's gonna be come out soon step ahead ahead of my time before it's time <laughs> so yeah so he but so he gives us some advice on how to be cool just love jesus right jesus will make you cool trust him mm -hmm. on how to be cool wait i'm sorry oh by the way is open up to Jesus, L is live for Jesus, and D is be a defender of Jesus. <laughs> so o is opposite of close up to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Loja. My God. <laughs> well, yeah, because Jesus. D is for be a defender of the, or is for defender of the faith, comma, be a. But yeah, <laughs> he doesn't, he hits like half of them. And okay, correct me if I'm wrong. He's like, be a defender of the faith. And then he starts another sentence and <laughs> a music video with Carmen interrupts that speech. Yes! Oh, it's violent, too. I wanted him to jump in like Carmen just starts playing. And I wanted Blaine Bartles to just like dive onto the screen and be like, ladies and gentlemen, Carmen. I <laughs> Got it. Did this TV show have a hard radio out? Like yeah. he just started getting covered up by the goddamn weather? <laughs> I think, honestly, I think the editor was not going to listen to the rest of fucking Blaine's bullshit there. He was like, you know what? That's enough. You got the D. I gave you the D. <laughs> and then we get uh, we watch Carmen music at us for four minutes before we're allowed to stop looking at this. OK. And the only thing I want to say about this music video, and it's true of all of Carmen's music videos, 
all of his intros are way too long, which is pretty common for live show performers, is they just extend their intros um, so that they can, like, get cheered for, except no one cheers for fucking Carmen. <laughs> so he comes out, everyone <laughs> cheers, and then there are nine goddamn measures of music yes. while he's just like, oh, I thought okay, you'd still here be we clapping go. Clapping now. <laughs> Song's going to be on in a second. Just give it a minute, guys. I'm, I'm going to run off stage, also- grab a bottle of water, come back. <laughs> why does why does he have a stool on stage like he's gonna do stand up comedy? I, <laughs> well, at some point so, he's gonna get real with us. He's, there's that that'll be probably for the uh, for the altar call or something. Yeah, he's just gonna get sad at some point and sit down and look away from the audience. <laughs> just like uh, this isn't. Good. I thought, thought you would been, clap more for the intro. He's, <laughs> started here. God damn. I look like a bouncer for a Mario Perillo Italian cruise. <laughs> this is going badly. And then it's over. Yeah, he sings us a song about God having broken up with him. And by the, the song like keeps teasing us like it's ending. The coda is longer than the rest of the goddamn song. Bold, bold musical choice. Yeah, yeah. Bold, <laughs> by the way, that means for be a musically person. Mm-hmm. Begin be always for the singing on the music. You should be singing overture. Oh, that's a, a good one. Word. That's a good one. All right. <laughs> Legato is also a music. And You're doing is too well. done. He, We're he out. Literally it. can't do as badly as this movie, <laughs> no matter how you try. And that's why they fired you. And you should and just D be up is for DS Alcoda. Back to the Coda. <laughs> <They'll see you. laughs> Yep, now we know why he was <laughs> booted from the writer's room before episode two. All right, and then I write, I wrote this in my fucking notes. The copyright is on. I definitely get to stop watching now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've reached the end. I think it's important that we underscore this week's theme. So I thought maybe we could each share a story of a time that one of you guys felt peer pressure. Oh, um, okay. Uh, I worked out. Pretty good. Um, my friends in high school taught me about how pot and alcohol are delightful. Made my, my life a lot more fun. Um, oh, okay, in college, I got a good one, too. Uh, my friends taught me that Ayn Rand is fucking stupid, and that made me a better person. So, peer pressure is pretty much positive. Go peer pressure, yeah. All the time. So here's the thing about me. No one ever had to pressure me into taking drugs because I was just like, sure, yeah, I'll do that. Um, the, the peer pressure for me, literally, though, uh, growing up in South Georgia, as I did, was to be a Christian. And I stood up to it, damn it. I stood up. They would have, this episode would have been proud of me. Okay. One good, one bad. And unfortunately, I'm not going to break the tie because to feel peer pressure, you need to have peers. Oh, okay. feelings. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've done many, many things in the desperate hope that people would like me. Yeah. <laughs> How'd that go? I mean, I'm a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> ended up masturbating onto myself so pretty yeah, well so pretty, pretty well. well scared the shit out of <laughs> I'll tell you right. that's, a real, <laughs> that's a real guy's name you should bleep over that second name I mean to be fair I fucking got him but you should bleep over his second name definitely got him <laughs> alright well that's gonna do it for our review of Fire by Night it's episode 1 it's not gay one. chicken if you're gay that's oh. all I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> that is the best actual breakfast club clothes. <laughs> Eli Eli Bosnick jerked off onto his friends. Beep something. Beep. I didn't hear it either. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Fire by Night episode one, peer pressure. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to make the bed for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. When the devil debates an angel about whether people are good or bad set to 1968 comedy. And the answer is the Bible. You get the story of mankind. All right. Judging by what we've watched before, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the whole goddamn story. But, you know, with that to look forward to, 
We are going to bring episode 221 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon uh, donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scaling Atheist Citation, and The Skeptic Rat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written and performed by Brian Slotting. We will dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you at the Breakfast Club close. While producing this show, Blaine Bartles developed what he described as a debilitating pornography addiction that destroyed his first marriage. <laughs> it's the best. Now, he provides counseling for men in recovery from porn addiction <laughs> through his online ministry that is very real called choppingwood.org. Is that the real name? That's the real <laughs> name. The 1980s went on to produce people like me and Andrew. You can't blame us. <laughs> Eli signed up for one-on-one -on -one mentoring at choppingwood.org <laughs> because the first month is free and I need to see what happens. And then he masturbated onto Blaine Bartos. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying I know what my nuclear option is. <laughs> You gonna bow out so Liz Warren can win? <laughs> well, you got or to me. Die. <laughs> Sorry, I could not do an offensive enough Jew voice to like match up mm. what the guy was doing in this show. That's fair. So. <laughs> you did an atheist Jew voice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Right? Because of that Vietnam dad had moment seen out some of shit, nowhere. Right? Like, yes, dad had absolutely seen some fucking shit. In that we need to watch all the rest of the episodes because in my head, canonically, dad's PTSD gets worse and worse every episode. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.